previously on Quest Friends. Yeah, so uh, that's the professor. Uh, she <laughs> didn't really have a spot on our team. She was just kind of the general insider connection. But not only is she supposed to be having a professorship on the prodigious, she's also been studying the ruins of the Apocrypha. If there's anyone who knows what our next steps are gonna be, it's gonna be her. Well then, I don't like boats. <laughs> Well, it's really more of an airship. A uh, boat is kind of just a general term I'm using. It's more of a, like a flying boat. Worse. Oh, are, are you all right? I'm on a boat. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, yes, you're on a boat. Is that code or something? A long time ago, feels okay. like yesterday. Does it? That I caught the no good book thieving nemesis of the University of Key, Kiapa Scotch. Uh, Charlotte, I um just wanted to um I'm a little worried about how reckless you're being. Shannon, Shannon, for the last time, I'm not going to be expelled. I know the battle I'm fighting. I know what I'm doing. Only losers get expelled. Afternoon. I don't know, like a dozen or so years ago. The University of Keys Library is in many ways an oxymoron. Its bookshelves are angled just so, so that you can see the edges of each additional shelf past the one in front of it, giving the impression not of an actual three-dimensional layout, but instead of a confusing 3D painting. It's quiet, but because it's so quiet, all of the micro sounds in the background, the whispers, the paper shuffling, the stapler, the wish of the ladders with wheels, are all amplified into a cacophonous hush. And while this safely guarded well of knowledge was supposed to be your freedom hopper, the garbled muttering of a pair of Zev Hall monitors behind you reminds you that it is anything but. So it's been a few years since Hop first left the small town of Dunshire to go to college. Uh, the end of the school year is still a few months away, but today will be your last day as a student at the University of Key. How is Hop spending his last uh, couple moments before these Zev appear? Trying to distribute as many pamphlets as he can. He printed out so many pamphlets about how no. unfair this book policy at University of Key <laughs> is. You can't just lock away books after promising books to people. It's ridiculous. He is talking to anyone who will listen because he has tried to stage so many protests. <laughs> and other associates of his have just taken to smuggling in books. But Hop wants to change the system, not just beat it. And since Hopper was so devoted to not worrying about beating the system, he's lost against it. He absolutely has. The, Zever, the implication is that they're coming for him, right? That's a thing? Oh, they've come. Okay. And, and there's, there's no running. There's No, Hopper knows that. He's, and he's fine with this. It's like, I mean, no, he didn't think that far ahead. He's younger. He's 10 years younger. He's kind of a hot-headed dumbass at this age. He's probably like 19 at this yeah, point, I would guess. 19, 20. So he's just, he's trying to make just any lasting impact he possibly can by trying to convince the librarian. No, like, I think that you would would see a surplus of circulation in the library if you let things circulate. Just imagine people coming in and taking out the books they want and keeping them for a reasonable period of time and then returning them responsibly. And if they don't, you, you can have fines. You know, that's how we keep books in, in circulation. That's how we keep people- Stone. The Zev leads you out of the library and upstairs to one of those indoor connector bridges you see at exposition halls in crisscrossing Key's skyline. This bridge connects to a brightly lit hallway with a dim perpendicular outcropping. You pray you'll turn down that outcropping. You know nothing about this dark side passage, but you don't have to, because you know everything about the staircase at the end of the bright main one. 57 steps, two bridges, four doorways all leading to the seven spheres that make up the oligarchy that rules both Key and its university, the Council of Spheres. 
Except it's not actually seven. It's five. Two of them just couldn't make it in. They had business stuff to do. <laughs> this isn't important enough for them. In fact, as soon as you come in, you hear a humming. You go, mm, this better be quick. I have to pick up my son from baseball practice. And that hums throughout this giant room. It almost looks like an observatory with giant windows going from the floor to the ceiling. Uh, And yeah, you are brought forward in front of the school board. And next to them, you see a very upset man with a bushy golden beard. And the sphere that started talking continues. All right, just make your case. And the bushy man says, What kind of case is there to make? This is the most outrageous, most ridiculous criminal the University of Key has ever had. Look, look. We should just kick him out right now. Um, look, I truly, all I have done actually is distribute pamphlets and tell people they should be able to get books from the library. I, I, I don't think that is an unreasonable thing to want. And um, I'm <clears throat> sorry about the thumbtacks that I left on your chair those several times. But, you know, if you listened to your student body when they said, we want this thing to be changed, you know, then, then we wouldn't be driven to such extreme consequences. Mm, we have listened to the student body. We have introduced the rent out two books. It only takes five weeks to wait policy in an attempt for students. We're not done yet. Who is the adult here? It turns out we are done. (laughs) Hopper froze his eyebrows that he didn't like that. Hopper doesn't look to the camera. And then he continues. So I think that maybe you were trying to make an effort to meet us in the middle there, but five weeks is a really long waiting period. And the thing is that a lot of homework assignments are due before the five weeks are up. So the system just isn't working the way that it is. But look, look, if we just if we just double down our efforts to try to make it work, you know, then I, I think that we could legitimately make it work. You know, if you just listened to people. Mm, we have been listening. We've listened to you whinge for a good 30 seconds now. We are the adults here. You'll understand when you're older. Okay, well, I've also written out a lot of email, of memos. I, emails are probably not a thing in the ninth <laughs> world, so I had to double back on that. It's a literal electronic mail. You just zap somebody and it gives them a message. I've written a lot of electronic mails about it, you know, and I have gotten like at least six signatures on one of them. So there are people who agree with me. And mm. um, I think that you can't you can't just ban all books. Give me a roll for persuasion. <laughs> It's a one. <laughs> it didn't matter because I know what happens, but it's a one. I'm going to treat this like a GM intrusion since that's what one nat, a nat one usually is. And the sphere says, hmm, we suppose Egbert was the one who introduced the book policy. And you can see the spheres all turn and you're assuming they're turning towards the empty seat. Agbert's kind of the worst. <laughs> Maybe we should rethink. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, hold now. Hold on. You're going to tell me this rap scallion is going to get away with his nonsense? Mm, Simon and Simon makes a reasonable point. Well, now that I've, if it was a reasonable point, then we wouldn't have to worry about secrecy. All right, but Simon and Simon, you can say whatever you want about that student. I'm not here about the frankly disappointing student Simon and Simon. I'm here to talk about the expulsion of the terrible criminal Kiapa Scotch. <laughs> expulsion? Upper kind of expected like a slap on the wrist. He knew that he would get in trouble, but expulsion is like a step past what he thought. So he's ex- expulsion. Simon and Simon, is it true that you used a name that deviated from your original purpose? But my original purpose? I mean, no. So the name Hopper Scotch means nothing to you? No, no, it it does. That's how I how I go. But I also go by Simon sometimes. I mean, my my purpose was to come here and to learn 
Uh, and both both of the both names allow me to do that. Mm, and they all converse with each other, and then they turn back. Around, mm, we have come to an agreement. Discard the moniker Hopper Scotch, and all will be forgiven. But, but why? Because you were not designed to be some grand book thief. Your given purpose was Simon and Simon, and that is all you shall be. Lunch Day Two! The Prodigious' library isn't nearly as quiet as its landlocked counterpart. All around you, exhausted students gently bang their heads against bricks placed on their desks, hoping that at least some of the knowledge within will seep into the newly forming cracks in their skulls. And while you're not participating in this hopper, it feels all too familiar. Long and the short of it is, it's a little bit after your class when Professor Gary Goldstone, this very same man who caught you all those years ago trying to protest for real actual books and got you expelled, was revealed to be your teacher again. And, I mean, a lot of stuff happened since then, but the long and the short of it is, you got detention. Oh, okay. And so I have two questions. Yeah. One, how did you get detention? And two... Is Misha also here? I, Hopper got detention because he said something snarky under his breath. Like if Goldstone was like, oh, the worst thing to happen to this school. And Hopper was like, bold of you to assume I'm the worst thing that happened to this school. (laughs) (laughs) Detention! Detention! All right, so you immediately got detention. Yeah, yeah. We're going to say that, like, you left within 30 seconds after that. You said that he yelled detention, and then you've been sitting here for, like, the past hour. His arms are folded, and he is glowering. All right, and then the other question is, is Misha here? Well, Misha doesn't know what detention is, but once they (laughs) saw that Hopper left, they (laughs) kind of were like, oh, why why does uh, Simon Scush get to leave? I would like to do that as well, and then go and, like, directly talk with Professor Nothing. Give me a roll. (laughs) Fourteen. Yeah, I'm gonna say it works, but not because you convince him, but the second you walk up, you say nothing. He's like, I'm not, I am a, I'm a professor, and did you use the underground illegal moniker of Mr. Yopper Scotch? Well, now you got me saying it. You're in detention, too. Thank you, I appreciate this very much. I believe you are a reasonable professor, and they are gonna follow Hopper. You're damned right I am! Wait, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Just- no! <laughs> Alright, so you've both been in detention. You can't say much, or uh, the professor on duty will uh, politely remind you. I have been informed that you should be quiet while in detention. Please! Be quiet. Chubo. So, uh, you you do anything fun to pass the time? Do we have any um notebook paper or anything? It's it's in key. It's key. Oh right. Well, in the library though. It's, it's key. key. No fuck key. <laughs> All right, Hopper. <laughs> will then instead um whisper. I'm sorry, you got detention too. Misha is going to say in their normal voice. No! <laughs> well, I just don't think that I should be in this class, so I don't know why you should be sorry about it. This is something I wanted to do. I really like Professor Nothing. No, uh, Misha, you have to whisper because we're supposed to be quiet. Oh, why what, Why do we have to whisper? I, it's, it, I don't, it's, 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 I don't, we just, I don't really know. It's just a detention thing. We're be- we're being punished. Oh, why are we being punished? Because I was rude to the professor. But I was not rude. <laughs> I, I I think I thought this was a prize. <laughs> Look, Professor Goldstone isn't a good person. <laughs> Decides that he doesn't like you, then he just doesn't like you. Hmm. 
hmm, as long as as he doesn't tell me to go back to class, I think that this is a good situation. <laughs> I think there are more things to be learned here than in that cooking class. I am going to explore around this classroom to see if I find something interesting to learn. Hopper is going to be like, no, we can't move its detention. And then he thinks better of it and says, nah, fuck it. Um, and he's like, go for it. You you can also do it. I don't know. The professor on call, as you as Tom correctly mentioned, Professor Cubo is pretty green. He really wants to impress the Oh my god, I forgot that fact said 14 seconds ago. I'm gonna get up and explore with Misha. <laughs> <laughs> Sibling Cubo, would you like to also explore this classroom with us? Sibling Cubo? Follow Jarvis. I would be very interested in doing so. However, I must do so after I've fulfilled my professional duties as you should do so after you've been punished for whatever misdeed you have committed. Oh, that is very well. After you fulfill your your job, I will explore this classroom will, with you. I can take you here and tell you what I find. <laughs> this is the best attention I've ever had. <laughs> as much as I want to stay in here for the next, like, three hours, I think let's let's call it there and let's move on to the next thing. So you explore a little bit. Cubo protests. He says things like... I might have to give you more detention. I'll have to see what the employee handbook says. And you hear And then he's consulting his databases. So it's going to be a while. He's distracted now. I'm assuming you kind of get lost exploring the library a little bit. Not like lost, lost, but like lost in time. That's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So after a few moments in through the doorway, walk a boy in a blue wizard robe. And next to him, a small little robot boy with little tube pipe arms and a backpack and boots. If they come in and Misha sees them, Misha is going to be like, oh, I assume you are the small machine that Shock told me about in the morning. My nomenclature is Misha Jarvis. What is your nomenclature? Um, Ness. And then he turns to Shock and just and then gestures to Hop and Misha. Goes, this is this your gang? Are we here to get your gang? Uh, uh yeah. I, I guess you could call it that. Uh, they're they're my friends. We we adventure together. Also, you do have friends. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. Why wouldn't you think I have friends? <laughs> well, I don't know. You picked up a stray robot on the streets of Key. You know, it's, we're in trouble. Not exactly someone who has other avenues of social stimulation does. Shock is gonna pout a little bit and it's like. Pull the hood down a little bit further over his face. <laughs> uh, Hop will introduce himself to Ness and be like, uh, um, I'm Simon. And he will offer his hand for a handshake. And Ness will like cautiously take it. And then he's like, so what's your deal? You look like a deflated balloon. <laughs> camera look. <laughs> Does a camera look and is like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a response to that. We've reached peak quest friends because now Hallie is dunking on herself in character. <laughs> I've had to do it twice. The best part is the confidence with which you said that makes me know that you've had that insult for months now. I thought because I was nervous about making two a PC and then like half a PC interact and I was and I tried to think about what <laughs> the first thing Ness would say and I knew in my heart that was it and I have been saddled with this information for months now. <laughs> For months now. My life is sad. (laughs) No. And then he's going to turn back to Misha. Ness is going to turn back to Misha and say, so what what did you get detention for? That's cool. That's exciting. Oh, yes. Uh, I told Professor Nothing, who is our professor for the cooking class, that I did not want to be in cooking class. And I would very much like to be in detention because I do not understand the concept of human food. So I am now in this very interesting place. You can join me if you want. (laughs) (laughs) You're a real go-getter. I like you. Shock, your friends are much better than you were at first. (laughs) Okay. I think Shock is also a really good friend. Cute cute anime blushing. (laughs) Cute cute concerned look from (laughs) Misha. And I guess Shock took cutting the scene short. Shock will um, say, we should hurry up and uh, see what Ellie wanted to tell us when we met up and introduce Ness to her. All right, let's go.
Hello and welcome to the announcement break for Quest Friends episode 42, Crime and Courtship part 7. I am Kyle, your GM, and I am... (coughs) I am very sick. So if today's episode is a bit short, that's the reason why. That's also going to be the reason why I'm not going to be doing any Patreon shoutouts today. But never fear, I will be doing the Patreon shoutouts that I missed this week during next episode, which will be extra long to compensate, assuming this one does end up running short. Some quick things before we get into our two very, very big announcements today. The first thing is, as always, our intro and outro song, Our Friends and Hitoshio, both by Miracle of Sound. In addition, if you are a listener who was confused and intrigued by the two characters that Hallie voiced at the very, very beginning of this episode, I would highly encourage you to check out The Cookie 2. This is our all-women miniseries, which is wrapping up with its final episode next week. So if you want to listen to the whole thing at once, now is a great time to get caught up on that backlog of episodes. But with those things aside, I really want to focus the next minute or so on two very, 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 very big announcements, both of which will be happening on September 20th of this year. The first one is to celebrate our second anniversary, we're going to be having another Q&A stream. I'll be providing more specifics about when exactly the stream is going to be, like what time that day, and also how you can submit questions. Uh, Feel free to use our contact page on our website to reach out to us with questions already, but I'll be giving more information about how you can actually, I guess, formally submit things over the next couple of weeks. The stream's going to be a lot of fun. We loved it last year, and it'll be just the five of us hanging out and talking with you about the show. We'll also be talking about our Kickstarter, which will be releasing that Friday, September 20th. And that Kickstarter is... A comic! We at Quest Friends have been working over the past month with comics artist Mandy Robertson, who you might know from her work on Don't Cry Witch, Star Crossed, and our own icon, to put together a 30-page comic called Quest Friends The Red Hat Syndicate. Quest Friends The Red Hat Syndicate takes place on the party's drive to Key at the very beginning of this arc, and it will feature our heroes running across a delightful spa that hides not only dark secrets, but perhaps even a previously unseen foe from their pasts. I couldn't help but do a dramatic voice there. Anyways, we're really excited about the comic. Uh, I guess it's good I'm sick, otherwise I'd just keep talking about this. But if you want to know more, link below is a blog post on our website that has kind of a longer explanation of the Kickstarter. We've also linked our Kickstarter profile in case you want to keep tabs on that as well. Finally, if you're not following us on Twitter, this would be a time I would highly encourage you to do that, because while the Kickstarter won't be releasing until September 20th, I'm going to be talking about it a lot on our Twitter the next couple of months. Specifically, I'll be posting new information about it every Saturday using the hashtag Kickstarter Saturday. All right, that's all I've got for you today, though that's actually a fair amount. Anyways, the final episode of The Cookie 2 will be releasing next Monday, August 12th, and then our next main series episode will be releasing Monday, August 19th. I will see you then. Yeah, so a bit of a little information that I told all of you, but I have not told our listeners yet, is that something Ellie told you during breakfast before you all split was she gave you a room number, a classroom number to meet up at. Uh, the classroom is on the, I'm going to say second deck, not in the third deck in the doldrums, but not in the sci-fi top floor, middle of the road, middle of the road classroom. Uh, Ellie, did you tell them anything? What, what did you tell them anything else about why they were meeting up? Yeah, Ellie, I... I told them that a very nice professor lady said that she could help us find the professor. I didn't think it was a trap. Um, and 
probably then just went off onto how like cool I was beating Vera at her own mind games. Cool. Uh, I'll leave it up to everyone else to whether or not they believe Ellie. Why would why would Ellie lie to us? That's true. Shock's the liar. Yeah, it is true. Wait, what are you? You can't say that, Hallie. I can. And I have. All right. So you all make your way through the uh, the second deck uh, hallways and eventually you make your way to a door that reads Professor Frank Manning, the fourth dungeon delving. And after a second or two, Ellie comes down the hallway to meet up with you. So I know we've got a, a lot to talk to her about, but also I need to ask her some personal questions about the other professors that you don't need to be privy to either before or after our meeting um so if you have a preference <laughs> for where i could get that in uh whenever is good with you you can do it before we go in you can pick us out early it's yeah y you can do whatever who are you uh ellie cool uh this is this is ness ellie i'm ness I'm here now. He's that machine that we found on the streets. Yeah, I stabbed a Zev for you. You what? I stabbed a Zev. Well, that's wicked! Shock, you've never done anything for me! Why can't you do things for me? Shock doesn't <laughs> respond to that. <laughs> Just a little crumpled inside. If if he were a crueler person, he would think, is this what Hopper Scotch feels like? But, <laughs> but that's a thing that Tom thinks rather than Shock, because Tom is a cruel person. <laughs> I had prepared for two dunks because I knew they would be my own. I didn't, I wasn't prepared for that one. The rare and highly dangerous triple dunk. <laughs> I'm sad. All right. Um, <laughs> what, what did Ellie, what was just said? <laughs> you just, you had just said as Ness, why didn't you ever do anything for me, Shock? Okay. And Shock just crumpled. All right, Ness, we'll leave it at that. He got a good blow in. Or actually, you can come in if you want. Just come. Or cover your ears, maybe. I, I don't think that'll be effective, <laughs> Hopper says, as Ness walks into the room with his hands <laughs> over his ears. Does Ness even have ears? <laughs> He's covering where his ears would be if he has them. All right, so you make your way one by one through the fashionably thin doors of the prodigious. And on the other end, you see the room Hop always dreamed he would have seen when going to college. The walls are covered with paintings and glass cases protecting visions of eight former worlds. Because she wasn't aware that you've entered yet, Myra is neatly arranging chairs that have already left scrape marks on the ground. From students eager to get up and share in combined discovery, you can smell the history in the air itself, accented by the sweetness of a bowl of strawberries on Professor Frank Manning's desk. And, absolutely best of all, the class's bricks are meticulously piled in a corner where no one can see, much less access them. Hopper really appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> he followed. He ended up following everyone in because everyone was going in, and he is just busy admiring everything. He's very happy to see the bricks in the corner. Uh, and then uh, the, the professor of this classroom, Myra Frank Manning IV, turns around. She has orange hair, freckles, and acne, and she's wearing a long mix of, like, a combination of a lab or a trench coat. And actually, the weirdest thing about her, uh, besides all these, you know, just random features, is that she actually really looks like a younger version of the professor, like 10 years or so. It's a bit strange. And she says, oh, uh, hello, can I help you? Yeah, so, um, so I wasn't aware that Ramia Brackleberry was gonna be here for no particular reason. Is she, um, seeing anybody? Oh, well, I mean, uh, yeah, she sees lots of students every day. I don't know. Oh, uh, I don't, uh, I don't really discuss that kind of stuff with the, uh, with the other... So you haven't professor. seen anyone around? <laughs> well, I know she's been giving a lot of life advice to Professor Goldstone lately. Uh, but... And then as she sees your face pale, she says, Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't even check in on you first. Are you still feeling okay? Are you feeling seasick? If you want, I can get you water or something. Please take a seat. Oh, I'm fine, actually. I'll pace. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, hello, Ellie's friends. I'm Professor Myra Frank Manning IV. Uh, fun fact, I... Actually, I've already used that fun fact with Ellie before, so I think, uh... <laughs> 
Oh, shoot. I'm so sorry. I've run out. I've run out of fun facts to say. Anyways, Ellie's introduced me to all of you. Uh, Ellie's mentioned all of you, so you must be Shock. Shock will take one hand off of his ears to, like, <laughs> wave slash hold out to shake. And oops, I bumped my, my mic. She she shakes your hand. You can take your hands off your ears. It's fine. I'm just going to go in the corner because I clearly can't handle this situation. Hopper, can you take the lead on this? <laughs> uh, he gives a concerned look at Ellie and then turns back to the professor says, uh, I'm, uh, Simon. Oh, yeah. So Simon, um, not Hopper? That's correct. Uh, okay. Simon, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry for asking. Um, I just want, I want to make sure. Oh, no, um, it's okay. Uh, anyway, I, I guess you can help us find, we don't really know the person's name. We just know her as the professor. We, we met, and he has the picture of the, of the heroes in Navarine. We were working with Mob and Mako to fight a spider cloud that we may or we're responsible for it we 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 uh did something and we don't really understand what it was and i guess the professor can help us fight it oh right i'm so again i'm really sorry um um and she goes and she grabs a pitcher of water and she says uh, do any of you want any water before we get started shock will accept the water He's very thirsty. He's He's been through a lot this morning. Okay, she pours it out. And a lot like the picture that Mauve had when you first met her, the water that pours out freezes and forms the shape of a glass. And then the rest of it pours in and actually fills it with water. Uh, and she hands it to you and says, okay, um, I know I just rearranged all the seats, but uh, you might want to, uh, to, to sit down for this uh, next part. And a lot like I do as a person, she's got this very awkward smile on. So... The professor isn't around anymore. Hmm. Did something happen? Uh, yes, I could. Sp I suppose you could say, yeah, I suppose you could say something happened. Are any of you nanos? Yes, I'm a nano. Okay, so you're you're familiar with the idea of patrons, right? At, at the risk of, of getting into things I don't as a player understand, Shock will say, I think I've heard it covered under a different term, but I, I think I know what you mean. Okay, well then you know, it's actually, and she perks up a bit now that she's talking about academics, it's actually a very interesting concept. So, and she just starts instinctually walking over to the chalkboard and starting to scribble things down. She's so cute. Okay, so a as we know, the data sphere is an entirely different ecosystem of our own, with its own kind of, of life. So here on the Ninth World, we have organic life, uh, you know, people and, and the like, and then we have uh, mechanical life. We have, we have machines. That is me, will me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Even things like the prodigious in, in its own way is a very rudimentary form of uh, mechanical life. So in the data sphere, we have what's called a, a third kind of like stratic life. Now, the weird thing about the data sphere is it's it's kind of all around us at, at all times, almost like a universe layered on top of our own. Uh, but the thing is, we aren't we aren't designed to access it. We, we can't touch it. We can't feel it. That's not something that we have the power to do. But here's the weird thing. We can access it, but it's been academically verified in, in multiple peer reviewed journals that nanos are believed to draw their power from this ecosystem. So so how does how does that work? Well, and she circles stratic and she circles organic and she draws a line between the two. We connect with something from it. It happens multiple ways. You could use Numenera, you could strive for a spiritual connection, or you could just be dang uh, lucky. This is the idea behind the giant relay that the Prodigious uses. And if you'll remember, the Prodigious has a giant relay on the top, this big umbrella thing. Um, in order to access the data sphere, we need to create a link with a bit of stratic life from it. We have to form a bond. And term hasn't been widely accepted yet, but uh, the term that I've commonly heard used for it is a patron. So we don't actually access it directly. Instead, a patron or patrons will take an interest in somebody from our kind of layer uh, and will form a link. And it's through that link with that patron that we're able to pull our powers from the data sphere. Does this make, does anyone have any questions right now? I no, it makes sense. I just want to say that in the background, while she was talking, if there's another marker, Misha will also draw a line from the mechanic life to the stratic <laughs> life. Because that would, I just assumed that it was just people. Oh. And so Misha just in the background is drawing a small line. So Shock, you said this was your term. So yeah, you heard this term the first time back at the wheel 
when you first met the nano spirits, they, they were identified as this this patron for you. They're why you get your powers are those nano spirits that you talk with every so often. Uh, what was the term that you uh, heard used for them? In the wheel, it was just called an uplink. The, the bond that you form with something out there in the data sphere. I tried to think of a cooler term than uplink, but that was all I had. I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, and then so she turns around and she says, all right, do we have any questions related to that? No, but actually I thought of another question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you you said Goldstone? Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't I, I don't want to I don't want I don't really want to gossip right now. But I mean, if it's important to you, no, fine. It's just you looking at her kind of puppy dog eye. Immediately, she <laughs> just broke, and she's like, if it's if it's really important to you, I don't know. I just heard he's going through a rough patch right now. I mean, all of us are. And she kind of does a five hundred yard stare and just says, all of us are kind of going through a rough patch right now. But, um... All of the professors? I mean, all of us as people, and just... <laughs> okay, I should... <laughs> okay. Fourth <laughs> dunk of the night. I thought you just meant all of the professors. You brought the dunk to yourself. I mean, Cubo's doing fine. <laughs> uh, and she saw... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I've been dancing around the topic. So... I am the professor. The professor is dead. Because this is extremely important to the rest of the game's story. Okay. This two-minute description I just gave. It's very important. So I wanted to make sure it was clear. You, you just described how magic works. I'm sure this will have no bearing on any further <laughs> events from here on out. I want to make sure it was clear and not like the fucking J.K. Rowling. If you steal a wand, then you're its true owner. But you have to be the one to steal it. And sometimes it just affects to you. It's very unclear how it functions. Well, well, as long as you beat someone in any, like, arbitrary way that J.K. Rowling decides, it counts as winning the wand. It's very simple, very internally consistent. It turns out that the nano spirits were actually connected to Hop this whole time, so really, Hop has the true nano powers <laughs> and can defeat Shock in a duel. Hop defeated Shock in a game of Hopscotch seasons ago. You only have one piece of paper, Hopper. And I don't think you want to write on it. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to mute us super quick so Emily remembers. Do you remember what, what's going on? I can still hear them. Told All you. according to the this is <laughs> I've won. Exactly as planned. Oh, you do it so no, net. Like, sounds okay. so Myra similar said, to. Hey, I want <laughs> so yeah, you're saying I should just have an NPC with a light Yagami voice? Very well. I'll write equations. No, no, what was it? Well, I'll write, so write equations with my right hand and enter names into the death note with my left. With my left hand. I'll take a potato chip. I'll take a potato chip and I'll eat it. And eat it. I'm sorry, I'll stop. <laughs>